it's really lovely to meet you. Oh yes, thank you. Thanks for uh, for suggesting this. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan. Well, I of course I'd love to hear that. I mean, you know, I'll sit still while you tell me that all day long. <laughs> First of all, can you just you know tell us a little bit about yourself? I just this morning wrote the last sentence of book number forty four. I write two books a year, every year. It's not particularly rushing for me. That's kind of how I do. It's it was never hard for me to write a book in under six months, I had to learn to get an idea whipped into shape right away when I finished the one before it. And I've, I've learned to do that. I have a, a horse and a miniature horse who keeps him company out in the pasture. I have a, a rescue puppy and a cat who tolerates the rescue puppy. And, uh, and I do astrophotography at night when the sky is clear. I'm right. just trying to be a well-rounded person. I used to do a lot of hiking and traveling, but the problem is I'm not a really big fan of traveling in the middle of a global pandemic. Fair enough, yeah. Um, so when did you start writing? I started writing when I was a child. Uh, I decided that I wanted to be a writer when I was a sophomore in high school, but that was kind of a pipe dream more than mm -hmm. the thing that I was prepared to sit down and go after. Mm. I sat down and went after it in 1991. And I, <clears throat> I got my first novel published in uh, 97 which is not the saddest story anybody ever told in this business. Mm. In the meantime, I published short stories and such. Mm. And, uh, first one was Funerals for Horses. Okay. Uh, and then there was a uh, story collection mm. that was published by the same small press that did Funerals for Horses. Then there was Pay It Forward and all oh, the Pay people and right. the movie and, the, and yep. everybody thought I was such a big deal and was making all this money. And then there was the still can't get published and almost went bankrupt. Um, and a lot of ups and downs and a lot of struggling because this is not, this is not always what people think it is. It's not a career where you make it and then you have it made. That's mm -hmm. not what mm -hmm. this is at all. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, since about 2013 since I've been with uh, Amazon Publishing in the form of uh, Lake Union. I have retirement savings. I mm. don't have a mortgage and and that believe me that's the only uh, security you'll get in this business is the kind you just carve out for yourself. It is not an easy thing to do for a living yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most people don't make it but on the other hand, some people do. So, you know, my advice to writers is you could be one of them. Actually, what I tell people is um, if there's something else you would be happy doing, like you think maybe you want to be a writer, but maybe also you could be happy selling real estate, sell real estate. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you'll eat better. Yeah. But yeah. If, you, if you honestly feel as I did, that this is the only thing you'll be happy doing, mm. then don't even pay any attention to the statistic. Yeah. And my feeling was always, I didn't think I would achieve commercial success because people told me this is not the kind of stuff that achieves commercial success. Mm -hmm. And I just figured, fine, then I won't have commercial success. I'll, <laughs> I'll still be doing what I love. I mean, I, I didn't figure I would you know, quit my day job and become an author and make a fortune. I figured I'd quit my day job, become an author and starve. <laughs> and, I, and I, and I did for quite a while. Yeah. But, but you stayed, uh, you stayed true to your own vision of what you wanted yes. to write. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because, because if you don't, then, you know, I mean, if you stay true to what you want to write, you, your book may sit on the shelf, but at least you've got something on the shelf that you're proud of. That's right. Yeah. But I can't think of anything worse than putting something out into the world that you just, that you winced. It, it's yeah. not worth it. I was going to say, there's always animals in your books. <laughs> um, almost always. I was just thinking about that today. And I was thinking, no, there are, I can think of a, a small handful mm. that don't happen to involve animals, but it's unusual. So I'm just thinking of Lake Union Publishing, and you were saying that, that since you've been with them, You've you've had this ongoing sort of commercial success. Do they paying my bills? Yeah, yeah. Do they put your books in front of the people yes. on Amazon? Yes. Yeah. I mean, not not to 
the detriment of other people's books. Mm. I'm not saying that. Mm. But, you know, they were able to find the correct audience for my books. Right. Now, a New York publisher will take a shot at what they think will be the right audience for your book. And in the past, I've had a lot of publishers take some very poor shots would be my target audience and just basically miss the people who would like the book Mm. and end up with people who are like, well, this is not what I expected, you know. Mm. The nice thing about Amazon publishing is they kind of know what what people want. You know, when they when they say if you like this author, you might like this, or yes. when they send you an email saying you might be interested in this book, they know something about what you might want to read the same way Netflix knows what kind of mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. And no matter what you think of those algorithms, they found my audience you've really picked on a key point there in selling books is that you need to find your audience you do (laughs) yeah and you you know you're counting on your publisher to do that and if your Mm -hmm. publisher doesn't do that successfully they won't come back to you and apologize (laughs) they will simply say well your book didn't make it it didn't sell yeah yeah and now nobody will ever want to publish anything you write again and so i mean it it is it's a very tough business yeah and when i got together with amazon publishing i essentially had little or no career I couldn't sell my books to a U.S. publisher. So oddly enough, I was selling my books directly to Transworld UK and not able to sell them here in the U.S. Mm. And my agency and I, you know, people would ask me, how can I get that book? And I'm like, I don't know, here's a place that ships it over. Mm. Uh, It was absolutely ridiculous. And so my agency and I decided that we would... uh, that we would just put out independent U.S. copies of those. This was back when everybody had a new Kindle and everybody was filling up their Kindle. Mm -hmm. And we decided to put one, you know, free was the big thing. So Mm -hmm. we put one on a five-day free promotion. Mm -hmm. Well, something about, I guess, something about the fact that it said by the author of Pay It Forward on, you know, by the best-selling author of Pay It Forward on the cover, somehow people glommed onto it like, oh, here's something you wouldn't expect to find in the free pile. Mm. Five days later, 82,000 copies of that book had been downloaded, (laughs) which brought it very high in the popularity rankings. If you looked at at the books that were popular on Amazon on that that day, you would see Hunger Games book, Hunger Games book, my book, Mm. Hunger Mm. Games Mm. book. Mm. And that was what got the attention of a publisher at Amazon who yeah. sat down and yeah. read it, yeah. contacted me. That's what they always say will never happen to you in this business. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, asked if they could bring out an encore edition. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, there, there have been some serious ups and downs. Yeah. So was that the only book that you self-published? Would no, I think there were... There are about four independent oh, okay. editions. Yeah. Um, like when you self-publish or, or you go with a hybrid publisher like myself, then the advertising is all up to you. So how did that go for you? Well, you know, I didn't have a lot of money to advertise. So mm-hmm. basically what we ended up doing was using the tools that the Amazon self-publishing platform provides for your promotion. Like, for example, offering it on a free five, up to five day promotion. Mm. And, and then also, of course, I was trying to get them uh, reviewed on book blogs and things like yeah. that. When you set out to market your own book, you find out why publishers have so much trouble making a success of something and why they're so shy to take things on because mm-hmm. it's not a simple proposition mm-hmm. to let somebody know a book is out there and honestly there was a great deal of good timing and good fortune involved mm-hmm. that I cannot take credit for yeah free isn't the same anymore they have a separate tab for free yeah you can be at the top of free but you don't even show up on the on the right. top of the of the page so right yeah. it's a different yeah well you know 
it's hard for the books that are, you know, $24.95 to compete with free. How would you describe the kind of books you write in terms of genre? Um, I think they overlap into literary fiction, but I think they're really more just contemporary or general fiction. Mm. They're definitely for, for people who like work that's character driven. Mm. Mm. I'm not saying that the books don't have plots, but I'm saying that the plots are ultimately not as important as mm. the development of relationships and, yeah. and uh, you know, the yeah. people evolving as the story goes on. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to make them sound dull. They're not. Um, I, I think, at least I, I hope they're not. They're no, not, they're not. <laughs> for the audience. Well, for the audience who enjoys that, they're not. Yeah. Well, your characterization is very deep and there's a lightness in your characters, even though you deal with the oh. themes, there's light, there's hope, there's, there's joy in, it's almost like it's in your writing, in the way that you write, in the way that you see the world. And you write with a sense of, I think, compassion for your characters. I mean, these are very intangible things that it's hard to sort of pin down and say, how is that in there? Yeah. But, and sometimes I feel like I'm the last person who's really qualified to say, but what you just said is, is a lot of what I'm going for. Um, I'm trying to tackle heavy subjects without the work getting bogged down in heaviness. Yes. Um, I yes. know that people do terrible things, but I still happen to believe that people are good at heart and trying. Yes. Um, I've noticed that people will be very patient reading about somebody who has a lot of problems if they're really trying to be the best person they know how to be. Right. And I, I think I, I hope in each book that I have a little bit of something to say about mm. what it means to be human, mm. that I can shine a little bit of light on what it means to be human and not make that feel like the bad news, if that yes. makes sense. Yes, uh, you do that very, very well. Yeah, good, thank yeah. you. I want to know, like, who's the person who's going to step up for somebody else's kid when they fall through the cracks, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's when you start testing the metal of your characters. Yeah. And maybe yeah. that is what gives your book such hope, even though you are dealing with some heavy themes, is that you do have characters there who do step up and help out. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what I hope, is that yeah. I'm kind showing that you know there are certain lines that we tend to follow like if 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 so, if the kid is my kid i do everything if the kid is not my kid i only do just so just this much and not more it's mm. kind of almost a social contract but mm. people are stepping over those lines all the time yes they and just it's are. inspiring they just... It, it's inspiring to read about people like that so do you do any marketing on your books or does Amazon just handle that for you? I'm I'm pretty fortunate. I'm pretty fortunate in that they uh, get the books out there. Mm. And also I'm pretty, I mean, they do. Don't get me wrong. They definitely do. They have a good marketing plan. Also, I'm very fortunate that having found my correct audience a good 18 or 19 books ago, mm this wonderful audience is waiting to order the next book. That's one right. Out, like like me. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful yeah. Yeah. luxury. Now, uh, I would say probably more than anything else. I mean, I accept an opportunity like this when it comes up for people to find out more about me or maybe see and hear about my books if they haven't already. Probably the most important thing I do is I just make myself available on social media. Yes mostly yes. Facebook and yeah. Twitter, um, yeah. just so people feel like they know who I am, just so that mm -hmm. they can come to me if they have thoughts on the books yeah. Yeah. and feel like I'm someone they can talk to. And, yeah. and I think that's important. I think that in this modern age is what the old fashioned book signing used to be back when I started. Yeah. That sense that a person can come and meet you Hmm. and then the next time they see one of your books feel like oh I know her yes yeah, yes yeah. and yeah. so and and I actually form some really nice friendships on yeah. social media I mean I've, most of these people I've never met in real life yeah 
Yeah. But a, so a lot of them are genuine friends and they just came to me initially mm. because they were enjoying the book. So, um, you know, I do that kind of outreach. Mm. I mostly talk about positive things mm. and I never talk about politics or what I think yeah. about. <laughs> Not often, but, I but no, I do enjoy it. I mean, especially yeah. now when I'm, you know, not literally locked down, but, mm. you know, I'm not spending a lot of time literally in person with people. Mm. And I do a lot of interacting mm. with people online and, and it, it, it can be satisfying. Yeah. People tell newer authors, oh, you have to be on Twitter and Facebook to sell books. Mm. Well, you don't really sell books on Twitter and Facebook. Mm. You mm. just kind of be there as the author of them. So people get out there and they start doing all this stuff to try to get their books in front of people thinking that's what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And that's not why people go on social media. They don't want to be sold anything. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a kind of a little bit of a confusion about how, how to interact. And the best advice I could say is just really just be yourself. Yes. Yes. Just yeah. interact and, and, with people and be yeah. yourself. And yeah. Things will go better. Yeah. It's like you're just turning up. You're turning up to a party. That's all you're doing. Yeah. You're not yeah. trying to sell your book. You're available and yeah. you, know, you can be approached. Yes. yes. I can't really think of any part of the whole thing that I don't like. Mm. Mm. You know, other than just maybe negative reviews from people who sort of didn't quite get it. But yes. I mean, it's yes. their right not to get it. And so what I do is I just, I really don't read them. Yeah. I, I read the reviews when the book is new mm. and I'm looking to see how it landed Yeah, and yeah. what people thought of it. And after I've read, you know, 20 or 30 of them as they come up, then I start just looking at the, the star average mm. to see how we're doing because mm. it's just much better for my mental health. Yeah. 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 yeah I tell my authors not to, not to re not to read the negative reviews because by the time I've published them, I know the book is good. I know that it's quality in terms of its um, craftsmanship, and therefore, if somebody doesn't like it, it's just a, it's just an it opinion. just isn't the kind of thing they like, you know. Yeah, that's right. Every now and then, somebody who I think it I think it's a little bit misguided advice will will tell somebody, well, you know, read the negative reviews and then you'll learn to do better next time. And I'm like, no, I'm I'm doing what I set out to do mm. and the people who like that will like it mm. and the people who want something else will not like it mm. and can you imagine if I just changed what I wrote every time because somebody yes. found it not to their liking where would I end up you know but your craftsmanship is can't be faulted so you can be confident in that. Like, oh, I'm sure somewhere, some, sometime, there'll be somebody who would fault my craftsmanship. There's no such thing as a thing that somebody won't criticize. Yeah, but I, well, I am comfortable with my craftsmanship. I put yeah. the same amount into each book. Yeah, I put the same effort into each book. Yeah. I don't sell out and just go, oh, this will be good enough for my readers on any book. Yeah, and almost without exception. I get that feedback from reviews, mm, mm. but I have some, you know, some authors not let me down. Some authors don't have the craftsmanship; they haven't studied, they don't know what they don't know. And sometimes, you know, I'll read a book, and it's like, you know, you can see that it hasn't been properly edited. I know Stephen I King always said that writing a story was was like uncovering, like, like an archaeologist uncovering a skeleton. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, this sense I feel that sometimes there. almost more like I'm finding out what happened and less like I'm making up what happened. Yeah. It does feel that yeah. way. So here's what I do take from real life. I I am a a, a passionate student of human nature. Mm -hmm. I find us fascinating. Yeah. Not always in a good way, but generally in a good way. But mm -hmm. I'm I'm fascinated by our quirks. Mm. You know, I'm fascinated by things like, you know, why is it when you can tell someone is angry and you say what's wrong, they will always say nothing. <laughs> I mean, why don't we like just live life straight on? Why are we kind of playing these games? Mm. 
Mm -hmm. um, I, I developed these curious, although I will say if people ever did start living life head on, I probably need to find a new line of work because that's basically what I do is I explore these quirks. Yeah, so, yeah. so I look at what's going on around us and I, I develop a, a curiosity about some aspect of human nature. Why are we this way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't like specifically go, okay, I'm going to write a book about that. Mm -hmm. But I start writing about a character and what they're facing and they end up kind of exploring some of these things that I find so right. perplexed. Yeah, yeah. So and to that degree, I can kind of see how my own experience yeah, comes yeah. in. Here's another thing. I uh, am very much of the school of thought that people are more alike than we sometimes think. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there is a level at the surface of us where we have many differences. But I think if you get down underneath that, there's a lot of universality to what it means to be a person. I think we all kind of, we all kind of are trying for the same things. We all mm -hmm. want the same things. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to feel safe. We want to love and be loved. We want our families yep. to be safe. Yep. And I think when you dig down to that level, everybody can relate to it. Yes, yes, yeah. Because they're like, oh yeah, that is how it feels to be yep. a person. Yeah. Yeah. So when you write, when you start writing, do you have a sense of where the story is going to go, where yeah. it's going to end? You, you have that yeah. sense? Mm. Um, I don't outline. So I there's a lot I don't know mm. when I start. And generally what I don't know is kind of how we're going to get from point A to point B, because a lot of that needs to develop as I go along. If I don't know where I'm going when I start, I kind of liken this sometimes when I'm talking to people to a, a very long car trip, like a multi-day car trip. <clears throat> I would not advise starting out and just flipping a coin at every intersection. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to go someplace, you had best know what roads go there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> On the other hand, you know, if you make up this whole trip schedule where you say, I'm going to drive until five o'clock and then mm -hmm. I'm going to stop at the, the motel six and whatever, mm -hmm. then you're going to blow right past like the Carlsbad caverns or something fascinating like that. And you're going to go up, oh, not on my list, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't just, and I do, I do present to my agent and my editors um, a book with a synopsis. Mm -hmm. So I know it well enough to synopsize it. Right. Now, yeah. a, f a five page synopsis is going to leave out a lot of people and places and yeah. happenings yeah. in between. Yeah. But I do know where it is I'm going because yeah. if I spend, you know, like I said, I'm writing two books a year, it generally takes me about five months. I really cannot afford to uh, spend five months going someplace and ending up someplace that's not where I meant to be. So people yeah. will ask writers all the time, are you a plotter or a yeah. pantster? No, yeah. I'm not. You're not either. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I know enough to get started mm. and I know where I'm headed mm. and I know what it is I hope to accomplish. Right. I also think that you get to know your characters better as yeah. you go. Yeah. And I think yeah. if you decide before you start writing what they will do, hmm. you're going to end up having them do some things that are not always the best fit. Yes. Yeah. I think as yeah. you get to know them, you, you can be wonderfully surprised by mm -hmm. what they mm -hmm. will do. Mm -hmm. I revise the prose line by line until I'm sure that every word is just what I meant to say. Yeah. But it used yeah. to be I would revise like, oh, look, the whole last one third of this is garbage. I have to back up and start all that over. And I very rarely do that anymore because, yeah. Yeah. you know, I mean, I, I've written 44. That's right, yeah. <laughs> as of this morning, you and learned. yes, you are going to get better at it. I mean, yeah. yes, you will still need to revise. Yeah. But yes, you will start getting closer and closer to putting down the first time through mm. the way you wanted it to go. Yeah. Do you ever, Anything you practice, you'll get better at. Yeah. Do you, do you ever talk to your characters? Not really. They talk to me. <laughs> yes. 
I mean, really, why, why would I want to dominate the conversation? I mean, I'm trying to figure out what their story is. So, I mean, no, basically, I just, I just sit in front of the computer and let them tell me what their yeah. story is. Yeah. yeah. If you know your character inside out and you, you allow the character to lead what you're writing, then what they do will always be appropriate yeah. to them. It'll yeah. be them. You're not imposing yourself on them. Right. Yeah. And All right. I think that we have covered everything I wanted to cover. Well, there you go. All right. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. you. Have a great day. Okay. You too. Right. Thanks. Bye-bye.